across beds, hearts and bucks. Gareth Lloyd. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. When you find out what guests are coming on the programme and you talk it through before with the team and you hear the, the guest that we're about to meet, you just go, wow, this is... This, what a guest to start the programme. So I was talking a second ago about hugging and kissing in the office. Should it be banned? There's a survey that's found that there's an increasing confusion about how to greet colleagues. Well, to tell us more and to, to talk around this subject, etiquette expert and royal butler Grant Harold joins me now. Grant, thank you very much for your time. How are you this afternoon? My pleasure. Good afternoon, sir. I'm, I'm very good. How are you? I'm great. And when they said a royal butler, an etiquette <laughs> expert, I'm, I'm in. Uh, this is. I'm in the safest hands possible. <laughs> can, firstly, can I can I ask you about your 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 jobs in yeah. the past? Then. Yeah. Well, I, I was a butler for Prince Charles, uh, Princes William and Harry, and uh, Duchess of Cambridge or Kate Middleton uh, back in the day. And uh, more recently, I now work with a cousin who is, again, it's a princess in London, and I run a little household for herself. And um, together, we also run etiquette classes, royal etiquette classes, and we have a butler school over at Blenheim Palace. So um, all of that, I think it's safe to say, keeps me, keeps me busy in my, my media work, which I love. I, I've done a few TV series and things over the years as well. So it, all, um, it keeps me out of trouble. Stop right there, a butler school. Mm. And is that yeah. where you, where you go to learn to to is it hang on is it butle or well it's but butling I always kind of say it sounds a bit like butlings doesn't it butling <laughs> um, it's it's kind of do you know there's so many different places people can go today and we decided to set up something that gave people that want to go into the profession a, a real introduction so I mean I think it's safe to say that actually doing butler training in an actual palace uh, with the staff. Um, and myself gives people that that real insight into what it's like to be a, a British butler. And we started doing this about, gosh, it's, it's it's four or five years ago, six years ago, and it's it's just grown. And we've got the next course coming up actually in June, and it's it's great because people are obviously keen to to do it. And I think it's also thanks to Downton Abbey. There's a there's a real interest mm. in, in people whether they want to go on to be butlers or. And some of my butlers have gone on to do amazing things from work for royals, do work for Take That. Um, um, what for fashion designers? So um, I've got uh, again. My job is really interesting. It's, it's great fun. When you, uh, I'm always looking for presents for family and friends, mm. and and mm. I, I always like to to buy those experiences, hot air ballooning or stuff like that. I mean, could people come to the school for just the experience? You know, no interest in it. Have a proper a, a proper. Yes. Sorry, a, nor, mm. another day job. Um, mm. And this is just a, a, a day's experience. Is that as we, well as the the proper we, the people who want to do this properly? We've had people come along and they don't want to go into the profession, but they want to understand it. I think it's safe to say I've also had one or two students I'm absolutely convinced have got their own staff, but they've done the course to check what the butler uh-huh. or housekeeper should, should do. I'm, I'm almost convinced. We've never been given, been given that kind of information, but it's just the way they behave, the way they act, the things they say. And you think, wait a minute, you, you, you're not <laughs> you're not off to be a butler. You've probably got some great beautiful home somewhere and you've got staff and you're just checking you're just checking how it all works <laughs> that, wow. that, I think. so it's, it's but as i said it's 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 really good fun and and i i loved it and we've just launched it um last year back in scotland which i i haven't done much in scotland for a long time and we've we've relaunched uh, the school in a castle uh, that was mary queen of scots one of mary queen of scots homes and um so that's that's equally uh, a huge success so between the say between the butler courses and the etiquette classes and my 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 kind of tv work um i don't seem to have a have a minute to kind of sit down You're but that's, busy, that's what it's nice to get to do an interview like this <laughs> grant so let's let's start right at the top there yeah. so this was this we're talking about hugs in the workplace but let's mm. go right to the one of your workplaces okay did you ever get a hug with william or harry i mean how's it how are the <laughs> do the royals view a, a bit of body contact as somewhere you just do not go near well do you know what's interesting I, i've always kind of taught people especially since leaving that when you're in the presence of royalty you let them offer the handshake fast you don't kind of go in and set they don't go and hug and all this kind of thing however it's changed because the younger royals do hug um, they obviously do, especially with children. You know, they're very yeah. good. It's quite obvious because obviously their mother, Princess Diana, was, was the exact same, had that wonderful way about her and made people just feel relaxed and comfortable. And the great thing is it's not just the boys. I've also noticed that other boys, as we used to call them, but not just the boys. It's also the, the prince. I, I, I saw a wonderful 
bit of footage of him a few weeks ago and at a school and he, he high-fived uh, a child and it was just so sweet to see. And now with my edit classes, I literally do say to people, well, technically, if a royal high-fives you, you can high-five. If a royal hugs you, you can hug. So it, it has changed. And if the royal family can hug, then obviously it's safe to do. But what I think is really interesting about this, this subject is my butler school in Scotland a few months ago, we had one of the students a mature student, and she said that the one thing she found really difficult in the workplace is how people uh, either knew or they come in for the day or whatever, and they go to hug. And she's old school. She is a, a, a mature student, and she just found it completely inappropriate. You know, she said back in my day, it was a, a handshake if the lady offers a handshake. And obviously, in the, the, the industry she's in, she understood that obviously the, the, the employer or the guest, whoever would offer their hand first because it's slightly different. Um, but what she didn't like was the fact that people just assumed to come and hug or just pat her on the back or whatever. And she said, that's just not the done thing. And I think it's safe to say that uh, our grandparents and obviously the old generations, it wasn't done, unless it was a really, really close friend. And I don't mm. think in the workplace you would have um, gone up and, and hugged somebody. So I think when it comes to the etiquette and doing it properly, I think in the workplace you've just got to be mindful. You've just got to be careful. And the world we live in today, you know, an innocent hug, an innocent stroke or touch the back or something can be deemed as inappropriate and that's the last thing you want so but, but, yeah I, I see I, I agree entirely with that but mm. in this day and age where we've got the the stresses and strains of life actually mm. for our for our mental well-being isn't mm. a bit of human contact actually what we all just need once in a while I, I think, you know, the thing is, as, as humans, we, we, we've got that natural instinct to, you know, when you see somebody that's upset or, or somebody that's having a bad day or something, you want to automatically hug them. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a basic thing. You, you want to do that. Um, I would say go with people's body language. You can normally tell uh, in the room with somebody. I mean, I would never... I personally would never just go up and hug somebody if I didn't if I didn't know them or if it was a first introduction or anything oh, like that at all. It's got me in trouble a number of times. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing. I think you know you you kind of go up to somebody and you see them and you think, oh, you look like somebody you could easily hug, but you just wouldn't do it. And if, as I said, if you got to know somebody and you were comfortable, and say in the work environment, so say you've got colleagues that got on really well and they end up socialising privately and all the rest of it, that's different. You know, if they come to your home and you want to hug them and whatever. That's absolutely fine. But again, in the workplace, it might be seen seen as, as just too familiar or inappropriate. So it's trying to just gauge, you know, who you're with, the environment you're in, how people would deem it. And I'm sure, I have no doubt, there's companies, for example, probably in the States, I hear some amazing things about Google. People work over at Google about, because we've talked about dress codes in the past and things. And you hear how friendly they are. And look, that's obviously what works for them. But then you look at the other case of, of somebody who I obviously won't name, but another well-known figure who got in quite a lot of trouble for hugging people. Mm. And again, I don't know what they mean by that. I don't know what kind of hug, hugging they're talking about, if it was just a general hug or if it was something more to it. But obviously it just shows you that it, it, it can get you in trouble. So you've Do got to want- have that. Do we want businesses, though, to be writing, you know, terms and conditions? This is what you can and can't do to, to mm. that, to that level, to that, that minutiae detail. Do you know what's I think sad, and I'm not that old, but I think over the years there's been so much when it comes to these terms and conditions and what is it the the kind of health and safety aspect. Mm. And I'm all for it. Don't think I'm not, but I just think you know the political correctness can become a bit it can become a bit too much. And mm-hmm. again, I was obviously in our grandparents or great grandparents' time about obviously setting protocols and etiquette, but we didn't have all this this kind of um, you know, terms and conditions of what you can mm-hmm. and cannot do. And as you said, I mean I think some people, you know, in workplaces they have to put things in conditions so people know how to behave and act. And and that's sad because you know, that's where it becomes really clinical and I don't think it should ever be like that. And, and that's what I'm saying in, in different situations and environments you've got to kind of gauge it. Um in answer to your question you know, I never, I never hugged any of the royals. Um, I was always, as a, I was a very good butler. I, I always knew how to behave. But of course, at the same time, I, with the younger royals, uh, especially, I had a, a, an amazing relationship. You know, and very much travelled and things with them. And um, but again, I would never really, you know, I wouldn't have just assumed just to go up and hug 
mm. one of them. You know, it just wouldn't. No, it just would, no, you know, it just wouldn't be done. I don't think Her Majesty would have approved if I said he went up and hugged her. <laughs> um, you know, I was lucky enough to dance with her on one occasion, but oh. I think to hug it would be a step too far. So I think it's just, as I said, it's just gauging the environment you're in. But on saying that. Um, I, there was one or two occasions when other colleagues went through either a difficult time or something awful would happen to them, and and obviously uh, you, I was there for several years, so you, seven years, so you got to know these people really well, and obviously I knew that I was allowed to obviously give them a hug if it was a difficult time. But at the same time, if it was somebody new it came in, I would I would never assume to do that. So it's just it's just gauging it. Grant, I could talk to you all day, and we've got to find a reason to come over to Butler School. Thank you so much yes, for joining absolutely. us today. You Thank look after you. yourself, Grant. Thanks very Thank much. You. BBC Three Cats Radio for Beds, Hearts and Bucks. It's a-